as river projects and integrated water resource management. Part 1 Do you know how have we been conserving and managing water? Archaeological and historical records show that from the ancient times we have been constructing sophisticated hydraulic structures like dams built of stone and rubble reservoirs or lakes embankments and canals for irrigation not surprisingly we have continued this tradition in modern India by building dams in most of our river basins. What are dams and how do they help us in conserving and managing water? Dams were traditionally built to impound rivers and rainwater that could be used later to irrigate agricultural fields. Today, dams are built not just for irrigation, but for electricity generation. Water supply for domestic and industrial uses, flood control, recreation, inland navigation and fish breeding. Hence, dams are now referred to as multipurpose projects where the many uses of the impounded water are integrated with one another. For example, in the Satlaj Bias river basin, the Bhakranangal project water is being used both for hydropower production and irrigation. Similarly, the Hirakud project in the Mahanadi basin integrates conservation of water with flood control. Multipurpose projects launched after independence with their integrated water resources management approach were thought of as the vehicle that would lead the nation to development and progress overcoming the handicap of its colonial past. Multipurpose river projects and integrated water resource management. Part 2 Jawaharlal Nehru proudly proclaimed the dams as the temples of modern India. The reason being that it would integrate development of agriculture and the village economy with rapid industrialization and growth of the urban economy. In the recent years, multipurpose projects and large dams have come under great scrutiny and opposition for a variety of reasons. Regulating and damming of rivers affect their natural flow, causing poor sediment flow and excessive sedimentation at the bottom of the reservoir, resulting in rockier stream beds and poorer habitats for the river's aquatic life. Dams also fragment rivers, making it difficult for aquatic fauna to migrate, especially for spawning.
the reservoirs that are created on the flat plains also submerge the existing vegetation and soil, leading to its decomposition over a period of time. Multipurpose projects and large dams have also been the cause of many new social movements like the Narmada Bachao Andolan and the Tehri Dam Andolan, etc. Resistance to these projects has primarily been due to the large-scale displacement of local communities. Local people often had to give up their land, livelihood and their meager access and control over resources for the greater good of the nation. Interstate water disputes are also becoming common with regard to sharing the costs and benefits of the multipurpose projects. Most of the objections to the projects arose due to their failures to achieve the purposes for which they were built. Ironically, the dams that were constructed to control floods have triggered floods due to the sedimentation in the reservoir. Moreover, the big dams have mostly been unsuccessful in controlling floods at the time of excessive rainfall. You may have seen or read how the release of water from dams during heavy rains aggravated the flood situation in Maharashtra and Gujarat in 2006. The floods have not only devastated life and property but also caused extensive soil erosion. Sedimentation also meant that the floodplains were deprived of silt, a natural fertilizer, further adding on to the problem of land degradation. It was also observed that the multipurpose projects induced earthquakes, caused waterborne diseases and pests and pollution resulting from excessive use of water.